Hey, what's going on guys? Adam here and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're reviewing the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. I've gotten a couple of you guys asking in the comments for a review of this one, so here it is. This used to be one of the 10 cards I had in my wallet before I upgraded it to the reserve, which is one of the four I actively use now. I'll go over each benefit and compare them to similar cards on the market, and I'll also include a comparison on whether you should get the preferred or the reserve. Then at the end, I'll give you the two cases where you would want to get this card. And if you fit into one of these categories, you should definitely check it out with the link in the description. All right, let's get into it. First up, let's talk about the general benefits you get with the card. You can get a sign up bonus of up to 60,000 points after spending $4,000 in the first three months after opening the card. Now you might be thinking, all right, that sounds like a lot of Monopoly money, but what is that actually worth? Great question. With Chase, one point equals one cent, so the 60,000 point bonus is worth $600. The cool part is the sapphires come with a point multiplier when you redeem them through Chase Travel, which has the same flights as Kayak and Expedia. Because of the C word cutting down on travel, they also added an amazing system called Pay Yourself Back where you can get that same multiplier on statement credit for charges at grocery stores, dining, so pretty much any food expense, home improvement stores, and select charitable organizations. So that brings your 60,000 point sign up bonus to $750, again for spending $4,000 in the first three months. That's like buying $508 Amazon t-shirts or 20,000 cups of 20 cent iced coffee. Hey, this is Adam from the future. So of course they announced potential updates after I recorded the video. This is a thing now. The main thing that you really need to know is that they might be increasing the sign up bonus to 80,000 points, which is an extra 20,000 points. If you're watching this before March 1st of 2021, you might want to hold off signing up. The rest don't massively affect the analysis I do later in the video, but I'll leave a link to the updates in the description. For real though, $4,000 in three months is a lot, but if you spend $300 a month in groceries, plus three months of rent using a service like plastic, that will pretty much get you there. You can finish out the rest with Amazon gift cards since that's almost as good as cash. And there's your sign up bonus. 750 bucks is a big chunk to treat yourself with. Just like Zeke here is a big chunk. <laughs> Haven't done one of these in a while. He missed the camera time. For real though, the sign up bonus is awesome. And based on that alone is a great reason to get this card. You can get this card for the sign up bonus, then spend it and close the account so you don't keep paying fees. This is also known as credit card churning. Speaking of fees, it has an annual fee of $95, which might seem high, but compared to similar travel cards, it's actually on par, but with much greater flexibility. You can make up for it with the points and I'll go over that in just a sec. The Sapphire Preferred also comes with zero foreign transaction fees, auto rental damage insurance, a complimentary DoorDash subscription, 60 bucks towards a Peloton membership, and one-to-one -one point transfers at a lot of the top airlines and hotels. These are more ways where the Sapphire Preferred can make up for its annual fee. The points are great that you are able to use them whenever you want and they never expire. For the last benefit, it has this really cool feature where you can turn the like button blue. I know, cool stuff. It's quick and free for you and it really helps the channel out a ton. There are loads of other benefits listed, but honestly, most of these aren't very unique, useful, or have free alternatives available to anyone. I checked these out on the website. I'm sure some of you could put these to good use. Next up, let's talk about the point rewards for those of you that are interested in keeping the card. First up, you get two points on all dining and travel. For those of you who don't know, dining includes pretty much anywhere that serves food. In addition to restaurants, it also includes a lot of places like bars, Chipotle, breweries, and even some takeout and delivery services. For travel, this is more self-explanatory with categories like flights and hotels, but also includes parking, tolls, taxis, and ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft. In fact, the Chase Sapphire Preferred gives you five points on all Lyft purchases through March of 2022. So that's two points, or 2% back on dining and travel, and 5% back on Lyft. Factoring in the point multiplier, that's effectively 2.5% on dining and travel and 6.25% on Lyft. The thing we need to figure out is how much you need to spend to break even on this card. Right off the bat, if somehow this is the only rewards card you have, you need to spend $3,800 per year on dining and travel or $317 per month, which will cover the annual fee. 
Since this is an upper intermediate level card, you very likely have or can get a 2% credit card. The gold standard for this is the City Double Cash card, which can give you 2% back on all purchases. And a great alternative for beginners is the Discover It Secured card, which gives between 1% and 2% depending on the purchase. I'll put links to both in the description. All right, so the break-even point for the Sapphire Preferred versus just using a 2% card like Double Cash is around $19,000 per year or $1,580 per month on dining and travel, meaning you need to be spending more than that for the Preferred to be better. This is really high, especially when you compare it to the break-even point versus is the Sapphire Reserve, which is a direct upgrade to the preferred. It gives three points on dining and travel, up from two, it has a point multiplier of 50%, up from 25%, but has an annual fee of $550, which is effectively reduced to $250 thanks to the $300 annual travel credit. All right, so the break-even point for the Chase Sapphire Preferred versus the Reserve is $8,420 per year or $702 per month. This is significantly lower than the break-even point of the Preferred versus the Double Cash. Okay, that's a lot of numbers, but what do they mean? Basically, the Sapphire Preferred is almost never worth it to keep after the sign-up bonus, assuming you have access to a 2% card and the Sapphire Reserve, which if you're considering the Preferred, you probably do. So we've established that the Preferred is pretty much a no-go in the long term, but when do you want to use the Reserve versus the Double Cash? The break-even point for that is $10,540 per year or $878 per month. A lot more reasonable, but still pretty high. Keep in mind that these numbers are purely based on dining and travel spending and do not factor in the other perks like DoorDash credit and increased lift rewards because these are limited time deals which you might not even get to use or the rental car damage protection which again, you might not even use and is fairly hard to quantify. These are just ballpark estimates to start with and should be tweaked based on your personal situation. I'll leave a link to the spreadsheet where I calculated all of this stuff and you can make a copy of it and play around with the numbers that suits your personal situation. If you appreciate all the gnarly math I did, I'd appreciate if you smashed that like button. All right, so here's the verdict. There are two cases where you would want to use this card. First is if you want to use it for credit card churning, where you get the card and use it for the sign-up bonus, then never touch it again. There is an annual fee, so you want to open it, get your 750 bucks of points, close the account, and piece the f out. Just a heads up, once you open the preferred, you have to wait a full year to upgrade or open the reserve, so make sure that this is something that you want to do. Second is if you are going to spend a good amount on dining and travel and don't have a credit card that covers those. Like we already talked about, if you have a 2% card like the City Double Cash, then the Preferred won't help you out that much since the Reserve overtakes it pretty quickly. But if you somehow can't get both of these while still getting the Preferred and you spend a lot on dining and travel, then this could be a great fit for you. So that's it. There's my honest review of the Chase Sapphire Preferred plus some other options to compare it against. Hopefully this helps you decide if this card is one that you want to go for. In a nutshell, it is great for the sign up bonus, but probably not much else beyond that. You'd be better off using the city double cash or going straight to the reserve. If you're interested in getting any of these, I put links in the description. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.